Thank you for joining me today. I will start to solve uh, uh, this problem. Uh, we have a bucket. This bucket has a weight 20 pound. And this bucket is hanging in this position with three cables, D, B, D, A, D, C. And this system in three dimension, because we are given X and Y and Z. We are looking to figure out the forces in the supporting cables DA, DB, and DC. How to solve this kind of problem? We need first to break each force to three components. Okay, what are forces do you have? We have a vertical load here or a vertical weight, which is the weight of the bucket equal 20 pounds. We have a force in cable DA. I can label it force DA. We have a force in this cable force DB. We have a force in this cable will be force DC. So we have four forces. Three of them are unknowns. And the fourth one is known equal 20 bound. Let's start to break each force to three components. I'm going to start with the most easy one for weight W equal 20 bound. What is the X component of this weight? What is the Y component of this weight? What is the Z component of this weight? You said it's weight. Weight means vertically downward. So we will not have X component. We will not have Y component. We have only Z component in the negative direction, negative 20. If you would like to figure out the three components for any other force, we have to figure out the coordinates of each point. Just to keep in your mind, to make it clear, Let's start to figure out the three components for each, uh, the three uh, coordinates of each point. Let's start with the origin. Here is your origin. This is the intersection of x axis and y axis and z axis. This is 0, 0, 0. If you would like to move from this point 0, 0, 0, which is the origin, to point A, how did you move in x? How did you move in Y? How did you move in Z? Any help? If you would like to move from the origin to point A, did you move in X? Any help? We move on the X axis. Uh, how much? If you would For, like to move uh... from the origin to point A, imagine, do you have any dimension given uh, in X direction between this point, the origin, and the point A? Oh, for A now. Yes, for A. Thank you, Aaron. Yes, we are given this dimension. Can you see it? Imagine, yeah. imagine, 4.5. Uh, feet it's a dimension in which direction in x and uh, this dimension related to which point point a and uh, between the position of the origin which is located on the z axis and your point a so this is your x coordinate 4.5 if you would like to move from the origin 0 0 0 to the point a did you move in Y direction? I think no. Why? We are given here 1.5 in Y. We are given here 2.5 in Y. This 2.5 and this 1.5 is a dimension in Y direction. But these two dimensions are not related to point A. 1.5 is related to point D. 2.5 related to point C. I, I am not given any dimension in Y direction related to point A. 
that makes sense so be careful the 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 dimensions are very clear but just pay attention so we don't have y coordinate okay if you would like to move from the origin to point a are you given any dimension related to a in z direction yes we are we are given three so the coordinate of point a in z direction will be three so now i can say four force f d a i can convert this force to three dimension f d a as a vector equal f d a as a value time you said f d a d a so point a minus point d i did not figure out the coordinate of point d so wait a moment if you would like to move from the origin to point D, did you move in X? Yes, we are. 1.5. This one. This one is a dimension given in X direction and this dimension related to point D. If you would like to move from the origin to point D, did you move in Y? Yes, we did. 1.5. This one. This one is a dimension in y direction and related to point D. So we are moved in y, y point 5, 1.5. Uh, uh, from the origin to point D, did you move in, y, in z direction? Are you given any z direction related to point D? We are not zero. I did not move vertically to reach to point D from the origin. So point D is located in the xy plane. Once you figure out the coordinates of point A and point D, I can convert the force DA to a vector. How? You said DA, DA, this direction. So the second point will be A, the first point will be D. So 4.5 minus 1.5, X minus X, I, plus uh, 0, minus 1.5 y minus y j plus 3 minus 0 z minus z k divided by this expression will be 3 square this one will be one and a half square and this one will be 3 square we can make simplification this term by your calculator just a moment 3 square plus 1.5 square plus 3 square under square root this one is 4.5 this one is 3 this one is negative 1.5 this one is 3 so if you multiply FDA times 3 divide by 4.5 I got 2 third FDA. Oh. If you multiply FDA time negative 1.5 divided 4.5, I got negative one third FDA. G. If you multiply this one times three, divide this one, it will be two third FDA K. I'm sorry. So we have the three component for this force. This is your X component. This is your Y component. This is your Z component. That makes sense? The biggest issue, how to figure out the coordinates of the points, A and D. If you can figure them out correctly, I believe this expression is nothing, just math. Anybody have any questions so far? Let's start to talk about FDB. Thank you. Let's start to talk about FDB. To figure out the force FDB, we need to figure out the coordinates of point B. What are the coordinates of point B? 
I think point B is located on X axis, looks like. So if you would like to move from the origin to point B, I think, I think I moved in X equal 1.5. I did not move in Y, I did not move in uh, Z. Because point B looks like it's located on the X axis by 1.5. This 1.5 is related to D and D B at the same time. So I moved from the origin to point B, 1.5, no movement in Y, no movement in Z. So if you would like to figure out the force DB, your force FDB as a vector, equal the force FDB as a value time. You said DB, so the coordinates of point B minus D, 1.5 minus 1 1.5 X minus X, I, uh, zero minus 1.5 Y minus Y, J, zero minus zero, Z minus Z, K. Divided by zero square plus 1.5 square, plus zero squared. You can simplify this expression. It will be 1.5. This one will be zero. This one will be negative 1.5. This one will be zero. So your final will be zero I minus one FDB J plus zero K. Sorry. Okay, so this is your X component. This is your Y component. This is your Z component. This is one, not 10. And that makes sense because the direction of this force looks like in Y direction, negative Y direction. The direction of this force is only in the negative direction of Y. That makes sense to have only Y component and the X component is zero and the Z component is zero. We still have one more. We still have one more. F, D, C, this force. That means I need to figure out the coordinates of point C, this one. If you would like to move from the origin to point C, if you'd like to move from the origin to point C, how did you move in X? How did you move in X? Looks like I did not move in X. We are not given any X dimension related to C. Can you see? Point C, we have only this dimension in Z and this dimension in Y. We are not given any dimension related to C in X direction. So we are not, we did not move in X. We moved in Y 2.5. We moved in Z 3. So the coordinates of point C, 0, 2.5, 3. Now I can figure out the force D, C as a vector. Your force F, D, C. F, D, C as a vector equal F, D, C as a value time. Coordinates of point C minus D, 0 minus 1.5. I plus 2.5 minus 1.5. G plus 3 minus 0. P divided by 1.5 squared plus one square plus three square. If you'd like to simplify, I can tell you the denominator will be 1.5 square plus one square plus three square under square root. I got 3.5. This one will be negative 1.5. This one will be one. This one will be three. To simplify, 1.5 divided by 3.5, I got negative 0.4.
اف دي سي اي بلس 1 ديفايد 3.5 اي جات 0.3 اف دي سي جي بلس 3 ديفايد 3.5 اي جات 0.8 اف دي سي كي So these are the three components of your force FDC. Do you have more? No, we are done. This is the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one. This is the fourth one. We have only four forces. The vertical weight of the bucket, force D, A, D, B, D, C, nothing else. Since you, this system of loading is in equilibrium. I can say summation for all x component equals zero. I can say summation for all y components equals zero. I can say summation for all z components equals zero. This is these are called equilibrium equations. You have to write them like this and go ahead and put your numbers. X component for this force, zero. X component for this force, two third FDA. X component for this force, zero. F component of this force, negative point four FDC. So zero plus two third FDA plus zero minus point four FDC equal zero. And this is equation number one. Does that make sense? Zero plus two third FDA plus zero plus negative point four FDC equals zero. Summation of all Y components equals zero. We have Y component for this one is zero. For this one is negative one third FDA. For this one is negative one FDB. For this one point three FDC. So zero, negative one third, FDA, and negative one, FDB, plus point three, FDC, equal zero. This is equation number two. Summation of all Z components for all forces equal zero. We have Z component here negative twenty. We have Z component here, two third FDA. We have Z component here, zero. And we have Z component here, point eight FDC. So negative 20 plus two third FDA plus zero plus point eight FDC equal zero. This is the four, the third equation. By the end, you will have three equations. Number one, number two, number three. Mathematically, I will solve these three equations to find out your unknowns. FDA, how much? FDB, how much? FDC, how much? If you have a calculator, you can do it. Uh, if you don't have time, that's enough. I will give you the full credit, but keep in your mind, if you found how much is, are these forces, I will give you extra three points. You will get the full credit if you set up these three equations correctly and these numbers are correct. Because if you have these numbers correct, that means you break your forces to three components correctly. That means you set up the coordinates of each point correctly. This is a very important point. Any question regarding this problem so far? Do you have any question? No. Okay. 
one more one more example i will do so all we have to do is have the equations set up and that's the end of it if we want it or that's the minimum for yes. those questions yes uh, because the next step is to solve these equations together it's uh, just a time and this is math not related to engineering mechanics and also if you have a advanced calculator you can do uh, uh, the solution of these equations by your calculator it's not a big deal for me okay the, the biggest deal for me for from the engineering mechanics point of view how to break each force to three components how to set up the ve uh, uh, force vector for each force this is the biggest uh, issue and you have to understand that uh, for equilibrium, if you have equilibrium in three dimension, we have three equilibrium equations. Summation of all x component equals zero. Summation of all y components equals zero. Summation of all z component equals zero. But to solve these equations together, it's not engineering mechanics, it's math. Okay. Let's do one more example, which is a funny example. We have a traffic sign or traffic light. This traffic light is hanging uh, at this position by three cables. A, B to this column, A, C to this column, and A, D to this column. The weight of this traffic light equal 100 Newton. And the point A where you hang up there light traffic or the traffic light i'm sorry the height of this point equal four meters we need to figure out the tension forces developed in these three cables cable a b cable a c cable a d this is a typical problem like the one we solved right now but it's different sketch let's start first step and this is my advice for everybody put your hand where is the x-axis this is your x and this is your y and this is your z can you see it this is the z direction so looks like this is the point where you have your origin zero 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 it's not a big deal but if you would like to figure out the coordinates of point a anybody can tell me what are the coordinates of point a related to the origin if you would like to move from the origin to point a looks like point a is just above the origin so i did not move in x i did not move in y I moved in Z equal 4 meter. Do you agree? If you do not agree, just let me know why. Look and imagine this sketch. The point A is above the origin, just above. That means I did not move in X, no way. I did not move in Y. I just moved in Z up by H, and the H is given by 4 meter. Let's try point B. Point B is here. Point B is here. What are the coordinates of point B? Keep in your mind, point B is the top point of this column. Point B is the top point of the column at this location. So if you would like to move from the origin to point B, I think I moved in X three meter. I moved in Y four meter. And I moved in Z, in Z this four meter. That makes sense? Keep in your mind, these three dimensions Three, four, 
and the four, all of them related to this column, the column at this location. And your point to be at the top of this column. So if you would like to move from the origin to point to B, I moved in X direction, this three. I moved in Y direction, this four. I moved in this, the direction, the height of this column, which is four. That makes sense? Let's try another point. Point C. Point C is at the top of this column. Point C is at the top of this column. So just imagine what is the given for this column. I think the given dimension for this column is this 6, this 3, and this 6. Does that make sense? These three dimensions... Three, six meter, three meter, and the six meter are related to the vertical column where C is at the top. If you can think about your sketch in this way, you can figure out the coordinates of point C. I think the dimension, uh, if the, the, the dimension you moved in X direction to move from the origin to point C, I think it will be negative six because you moved back. The dimension you moved from the origin to point uh, C in the Y direction, you moved back also, negative three. For Z, you moved up six meters. Keep in your mind, this dimension is in X, this dimension is Y, this dimension is Z. These three dimensions are related to this column. This dimension 6 in X in the back of X. This dimension 3 in Y in the back of Y. This dimension uh, 6 in Z in the positive direction of Z. We still have one more point, which is point D. Let's think about point D, this point. This point D is at the top of this column. So what are the dimensions related to this column? We have this four meter, we have this four meter, and we have this three meter. These three dimensions, three meter, four meter, and the six, four meter are related to this column. That makes sense? So keep in your mind, this four meter in X direction, this three meter in Y direction, this four meter in Z direction. So if you would like to figure out the coordinate of point D, how did you move from the origin to point D? In X, I moved the positive four. In Y, I moved the back. In Y, three meter, negative three. I moved in Z up four meter. So these are the coordinates of point D. Once you set up these coordinates correctly, you are done, almost done, almost done. So I will start with the weight of the traffic light. This weight equal 100 Newton. So what is the X component of this weight? What is the Y component of this weight? What is the Z component of this weight? Keep in your mind, any weight is in a vertical direction downward. Vertical direction means Z. That means we don't have X, we don't have Y, we have Z component negative 100. Piece of cake. Okay, four, fours, F, let's start with A, B. Once you figured out the coordinates of point A and the coordinates of point B, you almost done. F, A, B as a vector will equal F, A, B as a value time. You said A, B, A, B, so the coordinates of point B minus A, 3 minus 0, 
اي فور ماينس زيرو جي فور ماينس فور تي ديفايدد باي سكوير روت ثري سكوير بلس فور سكوير بلس زيرو سكوير وي كان سيمبليفاي The simplification of this term will be, I think, five. Three square plus four square under square root, it will be five. This one will be three. This one will be four. This one will be zero. So it will equal three fifths FAB I plus four fifths FAB G. plus zero key. This is the first force. Second force, four force F AC. F AC as a vector equal F AC as a value time. A, C. You said A, C. So the coordinates of point C minus A. Negative 6 minus 0. I. Negative 3 minus 0. J. 6 minus 4. K. 6 minus 4 k divided by 6 square plus 3 square plus 2 square. To simplify, 6 square plus 9 plus 4 under square root, this one will be 7. This one will be negative 6. This one will be negative 3. This one will be 2. So the value will be negative six seven F A C I negative three seven F A C G positive two seven F A C K. Who is the next? We still have one more force. Four. Force FAD. FAD as a vector equal FAD as a value time. AD, you said AD, AD. So D minus A, 4 minus 0, I. Plus negative 3 minus 0. J plus negative 3 minus 0. 4 minus 4 K. Divided by 4 square plus 3 square plus 0 square. I think this term will be 5. This one is 4. This one is negative 3. This one is zero. So you will have four fifths FAD. I negative three fifths FAD G plus zero K. Does that make sense? Do you have more forces? Looks like we are good. We are done with all of them. We are done with all of them. So whatever the shape or whatever the sketch given, the steps are the same. Exactly, no change. So by the end, and because we have acrobium for acrobium, I can say 
summation of all x component equal zero. I can say summation of all y components equal zero. I can say summation of all z components equal zero. Go ahead and put your components one by one. Let's start with x. We have zero. We have three fifths. We have negative six, seven. We have four fifths. So zero plus, uh, I think it's uh, three fifths. F A B negative six seven F A C positive four fifths F A D. These are the x component for each force equal zero, and this is equation number one. Summation of all of y component equal zero. We have zero. We have four fifths F A B and the negative three seven F A C and the negative three fifths F A D. So we have zero plus four fifths F A B minus I think this one is three seven F A C minus three fifths F A D equals zero. This is equation number two. Is it correct? We are good. Summation f of z equals zero. So please put the z component together. Negative 100, zero, two, seven, zero. Negative 100 plus zero plus two, seven, f a c plus zero equal zero. I think this is the third equation. If you can and get the extra point, the third equation can be solved alone. Because if you look to the third equation, we have only one unknown FEC, so I can figure it out directly without any extra calculations. Just 100 divided by 27, I got 350. This is the value of FEC. Then put the value of FEC here, and here you will have this equation, and this equation can be solved together. Anyway, if you stop here, that's fine. If you continue, you will get extra three points. Do you have any question regarding this problem? Guys, do you have any question? The biggest issue, how to figure out these coordinates. The biggest issue, how to read your problem, how to figure out where is X axis, where is Y axis, where is Z axis, where is your origin, and how to figure out the coordinates of each point. We have one more. We have one more example, and I will cover a new point related to this example. Uh, actually, we have a box or crate with a weight 200 Newton. This weight is hanging at this location with 200 Newton weight. And I'm holding this box or this crate or this weight at this position O using three cables O A O B O C looks like O A has something called here spring I don't care right now I don't care about what you mean by spring and the O B also contains spring and the O C does not it's the only cable I don't care about spring or not but keep going. We have a weight 200 Newton. This weight is hanging by three cable AOA with the force FOA, and we have another force OB 
and we have another force O C. That makes sense. So I will start with the weight. Your weight will have only three components, one in X, one in Y, and one in Z. The Z component will be negative 200. X component and Y component will be zero. Looks good. So far, looks good. Nothing new. I will figure out the coordinates of each point. Keep in your mind, this is your X. This is your Y. This is your C. That means this point O, it will be my origin. Zero, zero, zero. If you would like to move from this origin to point A. Oh my goodness, point A is not given. Looks like point A, nothing is given about point A. But keep in your mind, if you would like to figure out the force F, O, A, in X, in Y, in Z, be smart. Please be smart and read your problem carefully. Looks like O, A is located in the negative direction of Y. Is it correct? The direction of this force OA is in the negative direction of Y. So for F OA, I will have zero in X. I will have zero in Z. I will have negative F OA in Y. This is your X component. This is your Y component. This is your Z component. Easy. Uh, keep in your mind, don't ask me during the exam, during your homework. Hey, point A, nothing is given about point A. That means there is something you need to think about point A. O, A located on the negative direction of your y axis. That means we have negative y component and that's it. The same meaning for OB. Force FOB. We are looking for the three component. If you look to OB, OB exactly on the negative direction of your x. This way, negative direction of your X. So we don't have Y component. We don't have Z component. We have only X component negative F O B. This is your X component. This is your Y component. This is your Z component. Does that make sense? So we are done with three forces for nothing. Just uh, seconds. And finally, we have a force OC. Looks like your force OC, we have to figure it out with the normal way. Because point C, I can figure out the coordinates of point C. OC is not in X, is not in Y, is not in Z. So I have to figure this out normally. So point C, if you would like to move from the origin to point C, I moved in X equal how much? What do you think? How did you move in uh, X for point C? Let me clean up to make everything clear for you. So we are given three dimensions here, guys. We are given six, we are given four, we are given 12. Looks like these dimensions are related to point C. The four, this four located to this point, which is point C above. The six meter related to this point also where your point C above. That makes sense. So for point C, I moved in X positive six. I moved in Y positive four. I moved in Z positive 12. 
the only given dimensions in this problem, 4, 6, 12, all of them are related to point C. This one in X, this one in Y, this one in Z. Does that make sense? And your point to O is 0, 0, 0. So I can figure out the force F O C as a vector equal F O C as a value time coordinates of point C minus A, 6 minus 0. I plus 4 minus 0. J plus 12 minus 0. Divided by 6 square plus 4 square plus 12 square. So 36 plus 16 plus 144. I got this value will be 14. This one is 6. This one is 4. This one is 12. So we will have 6 divided 14, F-O-C-I. 4 divided 14, F-O-C-G. Plus 12 divided 14, F-O-C-K. These are the three components of the force O-C. And we have the three components for the other forces. We are done. For equilibrium, summation of all x component equals zero. So what do you have in x? We have zero. We have zero. We have negative f o b. We have this one. So zero plus zero negative f o b positive six divided fourteen. FDC, uh, FOC, I'm sorry, equal zero. Second equation, summation F, F of Y equal zero. We have what? We have zero. We have negative OA. We have zero. So zero, negative FOA, zero plus 4, 14, FDC equal zero. What else? Summation of all Z component equals zero. We have negative 200, zero, zero. Negative 200, zero, zero. And 12 divided 14. FOC equals zero. That makes sense? So we set up three equations. I can solve them together to find out your Unknown. But keep in your mind, if you smart and you read your problem, the third equation can help, can help you to figure out one of them. Uh, from this equation alone, I can figure out the force OC. Your force FOC will be 200 divided by 12 divided 14. I got 233.33. Then I can solve. Uh, FOC, so I can put here FOC 200, 3.33. From the first one, I can figure out the force OB. Exactly, the solution here is very nice. Times 6 divided 14, I got 100. If you put FODC uh, here, I'm sorry, OC uh, 233.33. I can find here FOA from this equation. So FOA will be 66.6. Can you see? This system of loading is very nice, very easy. The third one helped me to figure out the force FOC. Once you get FOC, put it here, you can find FOB. Put it here, you can find FOA. So by the end, your force OA equals 66.6. .6. Your force FOB equal 100. Your force FOC equal 233.3. Easy.
easy system of, 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 of equations to find out your unknowns and easy to find out the three uh, components for these forces. But keep in your mind the force OA. OA, we have spring. For OA, this is point O, this is point A, and we have spring here. For any spring, we have something called the K. I think K is given 300 Newton per meter. 300 Newton per meter. K is called stiffness of your spring. Sometimes you have a spring very tough. You cannot uh, uh, apply a compression force or you cannot contract it easily. And there is a spring which is very easy. You can push it and you can contract it. But K will give you indication your spring is strong or easy to be stretched or to be contracted. So in this case, your K equal force divide how much stretch you can apply. This is, this is a rule or this is a term called stiffness of any spring equal the force divided by the stretch. How much stretch you, can, you, you, you should expect. Keep in your mind, the force in this cable is called FOA. This cable or this spring OA, you already figured out how much force in this cable. This force, based on your calculation, equal 66.6. And the key, the, the stiffness of this spring in this cable equal 300. Then I can figure out how much stretch should be expected in this spring. This spring will be stretched by 66.6 .6 divided by 300 equal 0.222 meter. This spring will be stretched by 0.22 meter. Let me repeat it one more time, but for OB. We have a cable called OB. OB. This cable has a spring. This spring has a stiffness K equal 300. And based on your calculation, you found the force FOB equal 100. So the force in this cable, FOB equal 100. Keep in your mind, we know that we have something called the stiffness for the spring. This is stiffness equal the force in the spring divided by how much stretch you should expect. So keep this equation in your mind. Your K, which is the stiffness of the spring, is given by 300. From your engineering mechanics, you figured out the force in this cable equal 100. So I can tell you this spring will be stretched by how much? It will be 100 divided by 300. It will be one third point three three meter. That makes sense? So if even you are given in this problem spring or whatever, I don't care. I don't care. I will start to break each force to three components. I will apply my equilibrium equations to set up three equations. I will solve them together to find out the forces in each cube. Once you are done, okay, I will go back. I have spring in this cube. This spring has a value K. This K equal force divided stretch. The force in this cable is, is, is known right now. And the key is given. So I can figure out how much stretch in this spring you should expect. 